What's up folks, Gabe Montgomery here, 10 Horse Monty YouTube channel, and we are coming into the spawn. The water temperatures are warming up, the fish are starting to get aggressive, they're moving up shallow, and people are going down the bank throwing swim jigs, chatter baits, spinner baits, crank baits, but there's one bait that not a lot of people throw this time of year, and it's a top water bait. I think it's overlooked. So I want to discuss a couple different categories of top waters, some ways to target those fish and i'm going to mix in some clips from last year around this time with some fish catches so let's get into it there he is that's a good one that's a good that's what we need mm-hmm he freaking ate it. Dude, that's a good one. Come here. Gotcha. There we go. That's what we came for. Look at that, folks. In the mouth. Beautiful fish, frogfish. And, uh, you know, wow. That was fun. <laughs> that was a heck of a blow up, too, man. That's how you want him to eat it just crushed it probably my favorite topwater bait to start out with in the pre-spawn is the hollow bodied frog once the water temperatures get up in the low 50s i'm kind of looking for this bite i'll start keeping this rod with a frog tied on it on the front deck because it can happen quick typically on those days when you've got a lot of sunshine that shallow water will warm up a couple degrees and it'll pull those fish up there shallow if you've got a lot of grass in your lake this is the way to go for sure. This is great for skipping up underneath overhanging trees. A lot of times those fish get up there underneath that stuff. Fish when they're spawning, they like to have something over their head. They want something over their head because they feel protected. There's a lot of other predators out there that prey on bass. You know, you got raccoons, you got bobcats, you got herons, just different things that walk along the bank looking for a vulnerable bass. So they, real, they feel real comfortable with something over their head, um, a lay down. A lot of times a bass will spawn underneath the lay down right next to a piece of hard cover like wood. But an overhanging tree is a perfect place. A dock, dock, same thing. The walkways on the docks, they like to be underneath something. And this is a great bait to skip underneath docks and catch fish in the pre-spawn period. Check that out, folks. Boom, that is my first frog fish on video of the year. He ate it. This is a bait you can walk really slow. You can almost walk it in place because the fish are not going to be real aggressive. They're a little bit lethargic. They're coming out of the cold water period into the warm water period. And it's nice to sit this thing on top of them and just kind of let it do this. It aggravates them, especially if you could see the fish. If you got one that's up there early, and you know she's there, you can see it, or it looks like a place where there's gonna be a spawning fish, like underneath the lay down, or underneath the dock. You can walk this thing really slow, keep it in their face, and give them a chance to come up there and suck it down. Probably my favorite color frog in the early season is this Cali color. You know, it's got some black, it's got some yellow. When you're skipping back up underneath cover, up underneath a dock or a lay down tree, this yellow really pops, you can see it good. Something about a black frog is just a great color in the pre-spawn period. Two other colors that I would have, obviously something white and then something that's kind of a blue yellow color. This is probably going to come into play when the spawn is more into full swing, when the bass are already up on the beds and they're chasing these bluegill off the beds. There might be a good advantage. Actually, both of these work pretty good, but if it's really a bluegill thing, definitely that orange belly will get you a few more bites. Another bait that can be real deadly in that pre-spawn to spawn period is a buzz bait. Something like this half ounce Crockett Gator buzz bait. I like that gold blade, I like that dark colored skirt. There he is. Buzz bait, look at that. It's a good fish, guys. Really good fish. 
This is something that you probably aren't going to get a lot of bites early, but it could put that really big fish in the boat. It's a deal where you're going to be covering some water. You're looking for just a couple big fish. If you're fishing a tournament, say you've got a nice limit in the boat already, put this thing on, cover some water, and you may not get many bites, but the ones that you get will be nice, better than average fish most of the time. One of the unique things about this Crockett Gator Buzz Bait, it's actually called the Head Knocker. And it's called the Head Knocker for a reason. When this bait rotates, it hits the head. So this thing makes a little bit of noise. This is something that you're gonna be throwing when there's a little bit of wind, probably some cloud cover. You can also adjust this. You can pull that blade up and then it will run silent. So you've got two buzz baits in one basically. This thing is really good for that slow presentation. You can really slow roll this thing, which is ideal for those water temperatures that are in the low 50s. If you think you need something a little bit more finessey, here's another good one. This is just a quarter ounce buzz bait made by Cumberland Pro. And what I've done is I've taken the skirt off of it and I put a little Reaction Innovations skinny dipper. You can put your favorite three to three and a half inch swim bait on there. Hogs makes a good swim bait, but Something about this small minnow type profile generates a lot of bites when they're wanting something finessey. Oh, this is a good fish. <laughs> that was awesome. Came right off that lay down. <clears throat> ate it too. Absolutely ate it. Come here, buddy. There we go. That's a better fish. Look at that. Choked that buzz bait. Came right off that lay down. That was a really cool bite. I've been having a lot of luck with a white blade. So you've got a white blade, a gold blade. You could put a black blade on there. Either one of these. So a quarter ounce, a half to maybe even a three quarter. If you want to upsize the blade on a three quarter, you can really move it slow through that water column. This is a good way to cover water in that pre-spawn, spawn period and target better than average fish. Hey, 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 what do you say? A little Cumberland Pro quarter ounce buzz bait, white blade. Got a little dipper on there for a trailer. Man, that's a nice quality fish. Kind of digging this lake, making me work for it at first, but I think we're figuring something out. Seems to be the ticket. The next bait I want to talk to you about is this bait right here. This is the chug bug. And every time I talk about the chug bug, I got to give a shout out to Dave Holm. Dave is the one that reminded me of the power of this bait last year. I hadn't thrown it in a long time. Back years ago, I used to fish on the Ohio River, Galconda, Smithland Pool. And this was one of those baits that you had to have on. Something about the drawing power of the chug bug. This is an old school bait. It's been around for a while. Color I love is the baby bass. It's got a little high pitched rattle in it. And the unique thing about this bait is it's basically two baits in one. It's a chugger style bait, but you can also walk it very efficiently. So it's you can do two things with this one bait. And it's more of a finesse type of popper. It doesn't shoot a lot of water and it doesn't make a big gurgling sound. Now something like a pop bar. This is another bait that you can throw around the spawn and the post spawn. This really moves a lot of water. It's got that big gurgling, gurgling sound. Um, single, you know, single knocker in there but it makes up for the knock, the lack of knock, the lack of sound inside the chamber with that big cup nose. So these are both baits that I would definitely throw around when the fish are on the beds and post spawn when they get off the bed. Stay on baby, stay on, come on, yeah. Got it good. Come here. Come on up here, big guy. Yeah. <laughs> that is so much fun. Another topwater bait that you can mix in the pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn post time frame is this little prop bait. This is a really unique little bait. It's real subtle, real finessey. It's got a prop on the nose. It's got a prop on the tail. You got small hooks, got a little feather there. And I tend to lean more towards the bluegill colors, you know, something with some copper and it's got your blues in there, your, your grays. The bass are busy chasing bluegill off their bed. So this 
is just something they're tired of seeing. They don't want this thing sitting above. Let's say you're moving down the bank shallow. You're looking for a fish that's up on the bed. You're looking for that big bass that's sitting up there on the bed. You locate one, what are you gonna do? Well, the best way to work this popper or this chug bug or this prop bait, in my opinion, is to make a cast over that bed, reel it in real slow until you get within a few feet of that bed and then make a couple short twitches. You know, pop it, let that fish know that it's there and just let it sit. I mean, let it sit for 10 seconds then pull it a little bit more. You're only gonna move it, you know, this much, like two, three, four inches, and let that thing just sit right above that fish. Most of the time, they can't stand it. You know, if the longer you let it sit, the more likely it is that that fish is gonna come up there and blow up on it. See, on a sunny day, this bait is creating a shadow. The sun is shining down, there's a shadow that's created on the bed of the fish. They cannot stand this thing above them, and they cannot stand that shadow on the bed and they're gonna try to kill this thing. So the longer you can keep this in their bed, the more likely it is that you're gonna get a bite. You can cover water with this too. If you're fishing holes in grass and stuff, you can actually pitch it in the holes, pop it a couple times and just let it sit. You can move on down like that. So all three of these baits will work in that situation. All three of them are great topwater baits to be throwing in the pre-spawn, spawn and post-spawn. Good fish. Good fish. Just let him eat it. Okay, got him. Got her in the tongue. You know the deal. Chug bug in the mug. Ooh. That was a big one. That is a freaking mondo, guys. Like a mondo. Come on. Get up already. That's a fish. Good quality fish. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's a good one. <laughs> that fish hit that chug bug, jumped straight out of the water. I mean, I thought it was like a seven pounder. It's not a seven pounder, but it's a really nice solid fish. Dang. Look how wide these fish are. The last bait I want to talk to you about is a walking bait. And this really comes into play in the post spawn. You can cover a lot of water with this. This one is the Super Spook Boyo. Started throwing this around last year. It's a smaller bait. It's quite a bit smaller than even the Super Spook Junior. It casts really well and it has a really tight action. This is kind of why I like this over say a Spook in the post spawn. This thing really, it's got a lot of drag. It doesn't, it doesn't glide forward as much as a spook does. It seems to turn really sharp. So it sloshes a lot of water and it sits in the same place. You can almost walk it almost in the same place. You know, it'll move a forward like an inch or two, but it's a real good slow walking bait. It's got a nice presence. It's got a nice rattle there. Good hookup. And like I said earlier, it casts really well. But this is something in that post spawn when you know there's still a lot of fish up shallow, you could probably pick up that buzz bait and you can take put this into the mix, cover some water, give the fish a little bit different look. There he is, another good fish. Good ah. fish of the day. Another good fish. Golly. Look at that, folks. That's a solid fish. Just crushed it. Wow. That's a big fish. There we go. What do you think about that, Finley? Look at that toad. Holy cow, guys. Boyo. Dude. That's a quality fish, folks. Just fit, that fish came in about two foot of water just right on the outside of this grass. As far as colors, I like to keep it simple on these walking baits. I mean, something with a white belly. There's just something about a white belly. You know, they got, this has that chartreuse on the top. I think this is good for the fishermen because they can see the top of this from a long distance. I'm not so sure that it makes a difference to the fish. There is a little bit of a roll, so I think they can see maybe the side a little bit, maybe a little bit of the top. But to me, the advantage of having this chartreuse bright top is to be able to see this bait walking from a long distance. Because so, a lot of times the fish don't blow up on this. You know, you'll see on the chug bug, 
You'll see the same ha thing happen with this, even on the buzz bait. A lot of times the fish will just kind of suck it down. It's a little subtle bite. A lot of these fish are worn out from the spawn. They're not going to blow up on it until they get, you know, their energy back. So they'll be a little, you know, they'll just kind of come up and suck it down. So you might see a little boil, but you can't tell if the fish has this bait or not. But with this bright top, if you see, you know, there's no more brightness to it, you know, the bait is gone and it's in the fish's mouth and it's time to set the hook. So that's one of the biggest advantages of that. You know, a frog is the same way. If you've got this yellow head on this frog, you can really focus on that yellow when you see that that yellow disappears, you know that frog has got it. Nice. I think I like this bait. I think I like this bait. I'm probably going to have to get a couple more different colors. There he is. That's a good quality fish, folks. Good quality fish. Look at that. Mm. Boom. Nice fish. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate all the support we've got over the last couple years. Let's keep this thing rolling. That's a wrap folks. Thanks for checking out this video. Once those water temperatures get up in the low 50s, do not hesitate to throw a top water bait. Farm ponds, it warms up quick. It takes a little bit longer for the bigger bodies of water to warm up. But if you're catching fish really shallow, say you're throwing a chatterbait or swim jig up there shallow in like less than two foot of water. Well, let's just say two to three foot of water. There's no reason why those fish won't come up and hit a top water. They haven't seen it since the fall. It's kind of new to them. They've been getting pounded by, you know, the moving baits, the crank baits, the spinner baits, the chatter baits. They really haven't seen this yet. You can sneak this in there before anybody else does and you can have some really good days. I like to start out with the frog first and then I will kind of mix in a buzz bait and the chug bug early and as it moves on into the season you can go with this walking bait and also the buzz bait a little bit bigger buzz bait keep an open mind out there you don't know unless you throw there's only one way to find out and that's to keep it tied on and make a few casts with it so tight lines good luck out there on the water <laughs>